Welcome to the online course revolution. Join co-hosts Joelle and Natalie Rivera as they interview successful entrepreneurs who have used online courses to transform their business. The goal of this podcast is to both inspire you to share your unique knowledge, experience, and expertise with the world and provide practical insights so you can join the online course revolution and make money teaching what you know and love online. In the first episode, hosts Joelle and Natalie share the epic adventure that became an entrepreneur's worst nightmare after a chronic illness crumbled their businesses around them. They share what led them to creating online courses and how online courses and the passive income they created saved their business and their lives. Today, they have over 200,000 students from 195 countries. And when you hear how and why they went all in on online course creation, you will understand why they are so passionate about sharing their story and the stories of the other course creators that they interview in this podcast. But they don't just want to inspire you with their story. They want you to understand how courses can fit into your business. So this episode is also like online course creation 101. They'll cover the three secrets to creating a thriving online course, including one, how to turn what you know and love into an online course, including several real life examples. Two, how to avoid perfectionism and use simple tools and what you already have to get started now. And three, different strategies for monetizing an online course, including how to decide which strategy is best for you. Our adventure and really our transformation in our business and what we do, it started at two o'clock in the morning. And at two o'clock in the morning, I woke up, uh, we were in Washington DC doing uh, some vacationing over there. And I woke up and I was sweating profusely. My heart was racing, my blood pressure was all over the place and I was drenching. And so I took a shower. I was like, well, this is something that'll pass. And then I went back to sleep. An hour later, I woke up and it was happening again. And then an hour later after that, it was happening again. And really before we get into that, I just we want to take a couple minutes to really give you a background story, how we got to that point. But that was really the initial part that really transformed our lives. And so about a month or so before this night where he woke up in the middle of the night, we were in Costa Rica and we were on an adventure on a small boat up a flooded river to a little town that's out in the middle of the jungle that you can only access by boat. And um, we had a lot of fun, but we were actually pretty terrified, to be honest. Um, but, but the truth is, we didn't really know to what extent that adventure was going to lead us into another one, because um, the two o'clock in the morning incident, one way or another, was something that we picked up as an unintended souvenir from our trip to Costa Rica. Yeah. And part of the fear part, it was that we were literally passing houses that were underwater, <laughs> like the roof was the only thing coming up and we had to go an hour and a half into the jungle to where we were staying. Uh, so at that point we are like, do we want this much adventure? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe but, we should just be explorers, yeah, explorers from, now from now on. But It was a great time yeah. and in the end, it's a great story, mm -hmm. but this is how it all began. Yep. So what ended up happening was that, um, well, I got back a few weeks later, and again, it was happening, the nightly thing, but then it started progressing, getting worse. Um, and then it started happening during the day. So I basically spent months where I couldn't sleep more than an hour at a time without waking up, and this happened. My body started deteriorating. Um, I basically could not eat any solid foods uh, anymore after a few months. I had to just eat baby food. I could even walk myself to the bathroom at times. Natalie had to help me. I was bedridden. You know, I went from being this uh, adventurer who lived life at 120% um, that likes some risk and stuff like that to basically having my physical body kind of shutting down. Um, and we went to hospitals, we went to, I was a guinea pig for universities. Um, we're with the sound of disease control and nobody could really tell me what was happening. Um, and that's really was the scary part that we couldn't figure it out. So, and as you can imagine, while this is going on and Joel continued to get worse, I became his full-time caretaker. And so when you have five businesses and both of the people running them are completely out of commission, you can imagine basically everything went on hold. Um, we went kind of down to the bare bones minimum and we just let a lot of things go because there was more important things on our mind at that time. And um, in the end, it was a blessing, but it was certainly a scary ride. Yeah. 
So we like to call it a nightmare, but like now you're saying, it really was a blessing for us in, in so many ways. And it's really framing. And we talk a lot about this in our courses is that, you know, you can have something very negative happen in your life, but it really comes down to how you frame it. So uh, having over a decade in the field of psychology, I was like, well, I got to start applying this stuff. You know, I'm, I'm at a place that I had to come to acceptance. I might not make it out of this. Uh, so I said, maybe it's just a sabbatical. I don't know how long this is going to last, but maybe it's a sabbatical for us. Really take the time. We start learning, uh, listening to audiobooks, watching videos, taking online courses, and, and just going within and learning about myself and letting things go, and also learning just in general things that intrigue me. So we basically had a year uh, to really grow, not only uh, mentally, emotionally, and things like that. So. Well, and during the sabbatical, like for me, it was the, the worst experience of my life, but it actually... It, gave me an opportunity to apply everything that I've learned and everything that I teach to myself. And I actually found a place of happiness, like the best place of happiness I've ever been in my life in the midst of that terrible situation. And another reason why the sabbatical was so important and why people take sabbaticals is it gives you a different perspective. It steps you outside of your day to day. And what it did is it helped us realize all of these businesses we were running, it's like it wasn't really what we wanted. We had lost sight of the true dream that we had as entrepreneurs, and we had just created basically a prison for ourselves. But we weren't just, you know, spending our time in misery. We were dreaming about our future. We didn't want to give in to that feeling of hopelessness. And so we plastered our ceiling and our walls with photos of all the things that we wanted to do once Joel was better. Even though at the time we had no idea, like we couldn't see a path there. We didn't know how it would happen, but we knew that we had to keep dreaming. And so we would lay in the bed and hold hands and look up at these pictures. And we used to sit there and visualize ourselves going on the cruise. And we did that as a way of passing the time, but also to you know keep our our hearts pointed in the right direction yep. and not give in to the feeling like we were never going to get out of where we were. And one of my reflections that I really started having was on my legacy. Uh, if I didn't make it out of this, you know, I spent all this time learning and growing, you know, and I had how trans many years were you in school again? Yeah, <laughs> like like thirteen or yeah. a long time, right? But. Part of that was that I went back to school after failing my first year of college because my brother passed away and, and I had a sense of purpose and urgency that I want to contribute and make a difference so uh, other people wouldn't go through what I went through or what my brother went through and what my family went through. So part of the, this is like I dedicated all this time, I contributed the way I wanted to, but now it's all gonna be gone. If I die, my knowledge dies with me, everything I've created kind of dies with me. And what am I leaving behind for my family? And that was really, really scary for me. And so one of the blessings that we realized during this process was that of all the different things we had for our business, we had a couple of things that cr had passive income. So one was our magazine. We had a digital edition of our magazine and it had subscriptions that we got paid for every month. Mm. Uh, all we had to do was put the next magazine out there every month and we had a guaranteed paycheck. And so we survived off of that. And at the same time, we also had created a few courses a year earlier that we just kind of created them and sat on them. But even though we weren't putting any effort into them, they were paying us some money every month. So that kind of added to our monthly pool and helped us keep our head above water while everything else crumbled down around us. And so I remember one day, you know, as we're looking at our bank account and realizing like, holy crap, this passive income thing is literally saving our lives, that we look at each other and we're like, we really need to figure out how to have yeah. more of this so that we never have to be in this situation again. And it's really a situation that a lot of people find themselves in if they don't actually do something to prevent some of these situations. And really what we found with online courses is that it really served us at a very deep level because it solved a lot of our problems. Uh, one, our knowledge would outlive us. You know, if something happened to me, I would still have this content out there explore, exploring the internet and accessing people's lives and transforming, planting seeds of change. And it really also created the passive income. So we never have to be in the position where we were like, thinking, oh my God, what if I can't work? You know, uh, what happens to my bills and things like that. And it also allowed me to reach more people, allowed us to reach more people in less time, and also allowed us to, to find ways to, to con contribute while being sick and while recovering, because obviously 
I lost all my muscle mass and things like that. So I needed to find ways that I could still contribute uh, with the limited amount of energy that I had. So Well, and actually, even after Joel got better, it, it still took a long time for him to be strong enough to do things like meet one on one with our clients or hold workshops or do our coach training programs and run our events like we, we couldn't do any of those things anymore. And so the online courses gave us a way of being able to continue to reach the same people and even teach the same content. Because what we started out doing was taking the programs that we had already been doing and our trainings and converting them into online courses so that we could continue to teach people and help people grow even if we weren't able to be there in person. No. So the last time I was hospitalized, uh, we were sitting there, I was in the hospital for over a week, and I could see this little island, uh, Clearwater Beach, we, we were on the mainland, and I could see like this private beach and some condos, and I kept telling my wife, you know, just keep blinking, uh, just, because yeah, that was like my catchphrase, it's been since I was a teenager. I, my worst situation in life, I always told myself, just keep blinking, a blink of an eye, this will pass. Uh, so, because I, I would just keep blinking, before we know it, we'll be over there, we'll be over there. and. Uh, Reality is that little did we know that one day we would be over there, so. So what ended up happening was that I started working slowly on the creating the content. Um, and it was like 10 minutes a day. Sometimes I would record for 10 minutes and then I would go back to fetal position because I just couldn't, I didn't have the energy, I didn't have the strength to really be able to do those things. So, um, and it really shows that anyone, you know, people say, well, I'm just too busy to create courses. I was literally working 10 minutes a day to then go lay down in fetal position because my body could not take it. So when we say that anybody can really take away some time to create passive income, to create more freedom, which is what we all want, you can do it, anyone can do it. And for us, it was just kind of chipping away and really learning some of that process to be able to move forward. And it had been a blessing that while he was sick, we got to study and take courses about online courses to learn. Yep. And then a year later, we actually ended up moving in uh, to the condos that I could see. And so he literally moved in to the condos across the water from the hospital. Yeah, only a year later. So that's how much I tell people, you know, you never know what challenges you have and how your life can transform uh, in a very short period time frame you know we had sold all our furniture so where we were living before the house like you would walk out to our living room we had nothing left the kitchen everything was uh, we had three different rooms we basically had sold everything and a year later we basically grew like beyond our wildest dreams and it was really thanks to online courses and so three years later we came full circle like we said right to that place where that we had dreamed of being and Again, like really the reason why we keep talking about this is because we want people to always remember that it doesn't matter where you are now. If you allow yourself to dream of what you want, it's it's possible even if you can't at that moment see how you're going to make it work. And today we're living our dream. We actually went on that cruise that we had been staring at on our ceiling for months and months and months. We even took the pictures with us to take a picture in the same spot. And actually most of the things that we'd put up on our ceiling and our walls, we have gone out into the world and done since Joel healed and has regained his strength and we're able to go and live our lives yeah. again. And so it's just such a wonderful thing to know that we we created this, we, we believed in ourselves. And in the end, it gave us the remembrance that what we really wanted all along and why we became entrepreneurs in the first place was because we wanted freedom right. and that the key to that was to create passive income so that not only could we you know work doing what we want and where we want and when we want but also to give us that security yeah, and be able to have that greater impact that we always dreamed of uh, to be able to reach a bigger audience to be able to plant seeds of change all over the world and and really when you talk about freedom is freedom of time freedom of money freedom to do what you want when you want who you want right uh, and it's really what it's allowed us to do. For the and moment. we really couldn't have imagined that that was possible in the old businesses that we yeah. used to have because it was so much work and so much responsibility. Uh, you know, we, in a lot of ways, we were gluttons for punishment. <laughs> <laughs> we just had to keep adding on to our pile, but not anymore. We've yep. definitely learned our lesson thanks to our unintended souvenir. Mm -hmm. And so what we'd like to do is share with you 
how we did it so that you can apply what we've learned to your own business. And so the first secret we want to talk about is how we automated our traditional one-on-one -on -one business while still getting world-class results for our clients. So the reason why we were so excited about online courses is because like we've implied that we're freedom junkies. That's why we wanted to be entrepreneurs. We didn't want to have to deal with having a boss and doing a 95, nine to five. It just doesn't fit with who we are. We wanted the freedom to live life to the fullest and to more importantly, do what we really love in our business, not just be bogged down with responsibility. And really a lot of entrepreneurs, what they do is that they overcomplicate their business they overcomplicate life and and for us you know we lost sight of it we had five different businesses at the same time uh and we really thought it had to be this complicated mission this big convoluted thing that we had to do uh, and at our core we wanted to make a difference but really we were just burning out like and what would happen is that we were a very community-based organization for a long time and so we would find this need that existed and we felt like well someone needs to fill this need and so we would do it and we would add another business to the list um and so uh we love creating businesses it's a lot of fun but we just realized <laughs> we had to, to stop making so many that then we had to continue to run and so now what we've done is we coach other people to create their businesses and we created our own in a way that gives us the lifestyle we want. We built our business around what we wanted instead of the other way around. And really the way it started uh, with the online courses was that a friend of mine, Mike, gave me a call and he was in Puerto Rico and he was sitting on the beach. He was saying, you know, I'm having a drink here at the beach and just kind of hanging out and I'm hitting refresh. And I just want to call you and let you know. Because, and we're like, what does refresh mean? You know, I was like, hit refresh on the thing. And now I get what he means because, you know, when we launch or even every day, I love my numbers. I love hitting refresh and seeing how many sales we've gotten in that half an hour or hour, or whatever it is, because that's what's beautiful about it. But he was telling me about it and that he was making all this money. And me and Mike go way back. You know, we used to do workshops. Uh, sometimes we do like four or five workshops in one day. Uh, so for several years, we would do workshops and it's really, he told me that he started putting online courses out to really test it out. He had heard about it. He started putting some stuff out and that he was making money now. Um, he was cutting back some of the workshops he was doing. So I was kind of blown away at that time. And so when we heard about this, like we loved the idea right away. But there was a few things that, that we just couldn't wrap our head around. And one, at the time, we were concerned that in an online course that basically someone it's self-paced they're doing it on their own we just we couldn't quite see how they would get results out of it in the same way that we could get them results if we were coaching them personally or if we were doing a program we were you know teaching them more directly one-on-one -on -one or in a group we just we couldn't quite see it at first uh because it was so new we didn't know how it worked and we also wondered why people would pay for a course when they could just go get whatever information they wanted on youtube which is what we did a lot of the time um and could get it for free so why would they want a course and that was always kind of the way that we thought about it even though it's like we felt really inspired we also had these concerns and part of it i guess you could say it's ego and i think that all of us at some level think that, oh, I need to hold their hand to really get the results, you know, and a lot of people that we work with, a lot of people that we work with producing courses, initially they have that resistance because they think, oh, well, it's me, it's me, with not realizing that they can move past that. And the other part that we realize with the YouTube is that it's uh, people want packaged knowledge and specialized knowledge. So you can go to YouTube and get like, a quarter of your answer here, 10% 10, 10 of your answer here, 10% there. But if you can package your knowledge in a, in a product that's going to answer their full question and answer and help them move past something, then you're, you're there. Yeah, you're they, where you need to They be. want it to be easy. They don't want to have to go hunting around for it. And so we had a big aha moment at a conference we went to. And actually our ahas came kind of in a series yeah. to finally like get this online course thing. So we had been stalling and we went to this conference with the whole point of the conference was to help us develop like uh it was ultimately a signature coaching package but it was 
it was creating a program that we could do with a group and walk them through a process and get a result. Um, and so it was the first time we'd done something like that. And interestingly, when we went, we didn't really know what result we wanted to get people. We didn't know which, we did so many different things, so many topics, we didn't know what we wanted to focus on. But as we were networking with people, um, we kept mentioning in passing that we created a number of different businesses each in six weeks. And um, everybody would go, six weeks? How did you start a business in six weeks? And to be honest, we didn't, we didn't know um, at the time. And so ultimately what we ended up doing was choosing that topic as what we worked on at the conference. And so through that conference we were at, we discovered our six weeks business creation process. And we turned it into a high-end group coaching program. And we called it Quantum Leap Your Business in Six Weeks. And it was a very pivotal part of our business. But the truth is that it was still like either we were doing it as a workshop or we were doing like an intensive online tra training. And it took less time than working with each of these people one-on-one, -on -one, but it still took a lot of our time. And part of it was that we kind of resisted creating video courses. We, it sounded complicated, it sounded time consuming. And again, we're running five different businesses at the time. So we were like, do we really want to get in that space? Until we had one day we were running a festival um, and we used to put conferences and festivals together. And we probably hadn't slept in like three days at this point, you know, it's like- <laughs> Events um, are hard. <laughs> yeah. So we realized the amount of effort that we were putting in and it was just ridiculous. We were burned out. We were like on our last breath going through this, just waiting for it to finish. Instead of enjoying it, we were just waiting for it to finish. And we realized we were tired of this one-time payoff of putting all this energy and being dependent on that one-time payoff of, of exchanging money uh, for time. So yeah, it was like, it felt like gambling. Yeah. And so that was that final moment that it finally clicked on our brain that maybe we should think about doing this online course. And we already had proven that even though we were spending a lot less one-on-one -on -one time with these people, they were getting amazing results with that program we created. And so we took it and we created video lectures for the teaching part and like really detailed worksheets that we felt would like make up for the fact that we weren't there with them and we created the course. And so we ended up with more students than we could have ever possibly have handled in our group coaching program because you can only fit so many people if you're wanting an engaged group and you only have so much time. So what, one of the things is it really blew up. You know, we've had over 3000 people just take that one course that we, uh, had launched, you know, we had great ratings and it really made a big difference. And, and we got people telling us and the difference that it was making in their lives. So and also a lot of the people who took the course, um, even the completely do it yourself version, those people upgraded themselves to our higher end program because they realized that they wanted more one on one attention. And some of them actually upgraded to being clients of ours as well, working with us one on one. So it started really bringing in income without doing more work and really, I don't know about all you out there, but if you want more freedom in your life and flexibility, you can put yes, you can put a Y, you can just put a dot or whatever it is. Cause this is something again, that we all do. We overwork ourselves. Uh, but again, we had so many other responsibilities that we didn't go all in. Yeah, well, like we knew it was working, but it's like, we still didn't get it. So, <laughs> so, and then what happened was Joel's illness gave us that kick in the pants to finally get our, selves in the gear and create the courses that really we knew that we needed to be creating. Um, and also, of course, we learned the lesson that that passive income had really saved us. So it's like the reason why we're telling you this is because we don't want you to have to wait for a big kick in the pants. Uh, let this event be the kick in the pants for you. <laughs> yeah. And part of it is recognizing, too, that we are at our core we're conditioned to do the same thing. Actually, studies have shown that 50% of what you do is the same behaviors over and over and over again. So for us, it took something dramatic to realize that even though this was working, we should focus more energy because we were working on autopilot because we were so busy. And that's what we want people to do is wake up and realize that there's a different way of doing this. And this works for any topic. You know, we know people in, in this space of creating bread. Uh, one of the people that we know, she creates like one hour courses of how to bake specific types of bread. And last year she brought $300,000. That, that You heard that right, $300,000 teaching people how to bake bread. So regardless of your niche, there's a need out there. You know, we know someone else that did a raw material 
uh, tips for teachers. She brought in a million dollars last year. We know people that have done like guitar lessons. Again, these are not people that are the, the best, the most professional people that have this like master's or doctor degree in this field. You know, they're just people that have a passion with this, explored it and want to share that passion, making, you know, six figures income and more just in that. So when actually a lot of people we know that they might have some professional job or they're you know, they have this big business and they just do a thing on the side that's not even related to the topic. They just yeah. teach a skill that they know. Like one of the top selling types of courses is teaching things like Microsoft Excel. So like <laughs> literally like any topic you can think of can work because there's a market of people out there looking for it. And it's just finding the right way to put it in front of the right people. And people are hungry for it. And I'll give you a perfect example. This is uh, Michael Williams. And this is the one who gave us the idea about yeah, courses in the yeah. first place. And, you know, one of the things that he used to do is that he was very successful at doing workshops. And, uh, and one of the things that happened was that he used to stutter a lot, you know, since he was a little kid. He used to bite himself to the point that he would bleed to stop stuttering when he would talk to people. And, you know, it really impacted him emotionally, the way he thought about himself. And he went into uh, to be a minister. And in that process, what ended up happening, though, with time that he was able to teach himself how to stop stuttering. So what happened was that he wanted to help people stop stuttering, even though he was doing speaking on different topics and stuff like that. So he started making like YouTube videos and just posting stuff out there to help people. And he started developing some following, but he decided that he was gonna do an online course. Uh, and he was really seeing that students were getting great results because people were wanting more information uh, and actually following through and getting the results. It really freed his time to stop doing some of the other stuff that he was doing that he wasn't really passionate about, he wasn't aligned with, wasn't his purpose, and that he was able to raise his fees because he was also doing coaching. So it really expanded his coaching because now he not only reached more people with his courses, but now he can have a lot more people asking for his coaching so he can be more selective who he worked with. Another person is Phil, uh, which we know very well as well. He worked at a college and he had access to, to looking at online courses and stuff like that. And he realized that, hey, I could teach. I have several skills that I can really do and I can put it out there and do the same thing. Uh, so his thing is that he sells it through different marketplaces um, and he kept making courses on new topics and his sales just kind of snowballed uh, where right now that's what he does full time. And he's really expanded. He has several hundred thousand students actually at this point. And we'll talk more about numbers when we keep going for you to re really realize what is really possible. And then there is Sherry. And so she came at this in a completely different way. So you'll notice that each one of these people has like a different way that they use courses in their business. Mm -hmm. And so what happened with Sherry is she was a podiatrist and she had her own practice and it was quite successful. She was miserable and she sold her practice and she went on a spiritual quest and she actually became the retreat facilitator planning the retreats for Don Miguel Ruiz, who's the author of The Four Agreements. And so she did it for quite a long time and she fulfilled her quest and she became an expert at running really high quality, profitable retreats because of what she was doing for him. And so when she stopped working for him, she became a life coach. And um, at first she wasn't, you know, coaching people on doing retreats. It's just something that she did for fun. She actually had a, a travel agency that she ran on the side. Um, but what she found is in the spheres of influence that she worked with and all these events she went to, all these other coaches would be coming up to her asking her, how can I run a retreat that's actually profitable? Um, and so she ended up coaching people on that and then realized that every time she was meeting with a client and coaching them on creating a retreat, she was basically teaching them the same thing over and over and over again to every new client. And so she decided to create a course and she integrated her course with group coaching um, and she was able to reach a lot more people, train a lot more people than she could ever have reached with her one-on-one -on -one coaching. And now she has people all over the world that are using her methods for running retreats and they're all making money and everybody's happy. Yeah, and really at the end of the day, it like she says, she's making money, but she's really reaching people all over the world. And at the end of the day, it is that contribution that you're creating, so. And so here's the next secret we'd like to share. And this is how exactly did we create nine courses in six weeks while being chased 
by a hurricane. And literally that happened. So <laughs> we'll share how that happened. But before we do that, I just want to point out that you can start with what you have. You know, a lot of people say, well, I need to get this professional uh, video equipment, professional lighting, professional like microphone to really make this work. So I can't really do that right now, but that's not the truth. In fact, when we started, we had a point and shoot camera and we used our headphones from our cell phone and use the, the little speaker thing, like if you're making a phone call, but we would obviously hide the headphone piece, you know, <laughs> inside our shirt. Ghetto setup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we would record it through an app on our phone. And then we bought the lights uh, from Home Depot, you know, these clamp lights, and we just set up the clamp lights and very inexpensive with things that we can easily get. Most of that we already have, except the clamp lights that cost like 10 bucks each or something like that. And we were ready to get going and we were out there doing our thing. So, and today really, if we were to think back, technology has changed and now you can even buy a webcam, for example, um, for 30 bucks that it, you can just use and not have to buy all the other stuff that I just said and make it a lot easier. So. Yeah, the quality has gone up a lot. And yeah. really the point here is that in our situation, we were pretty limited but we found a way to make it work with where we are. We didn't let it hold us back because we really had no choice. Um, but the problem is that even with you know our makeshift setup, it felt like it was taking forever to get our course up and going because like Joelle said, sometimes you could only do like 10 minutes a day. And so what would happen is he would get up there and he'd do it, but like it felt like we were wasting time because we kept trying to make it perfect. And we realized that we didn't have the luxury of perfection and we couldn't o overcomplicate it. We had to find a way to be efficient. And so we actually started calling ourselves the anti-perfectionists to develop an identity of the people that would just do it. And it doesn't mean that we were putting out bad quality stuff because we were still pulling out great content, but it had to make us efficient. It had to make a streamline everything that we did because again, if I only had 10, 15 minutes or sometimes 20 minutes and I would celebrate when I had 20 minutes and then to lay down, we would never finish it. So it's like we had to learn how to streamline and be efficient at everything that we did. And one of the quotes that I love is by the founder on LinkedIn, which he says, if you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you launched it too late. And that's really what we push everyone is that don't wait. You know do it now, put it out there, and you can continue to evolve it, develop it, get feedback as you go along, and continue to make it even better. And in fact, that first course we made while Joelle was still sick is actually still our top selling <laughs> course. And it's everybody's favorite, and it gets fantastic reviews. And when we look at it, we laugh hysterically because it's yeah. pretty terrible. But to the people watching it, they don't know any different. And that's yeah. really the point, because the content was yeah. fantastic. And it's painful. <laughs> like. Literally, it's painful. When I watch it, it's like, turn it off because I don't want to see it. <laughs> so, One day we'll redo it. Yeah. Okay, so to our story of the hurricane and the nine courses. So what had happened was a company that we've worked with a lot um, came to us and said, we have a big list of courses we'd like to create. You know, We know you guys' courses are great. Uh, would you like to make any of them? And um, ultimately, they were thinking we'd say, yeah, we'll make one or two. And they told us they had a six-week turnaround time. So we came back to them and said, yeah, we want to do these nine courses. And they thought we were Not. <laughs> completely <laughs> insane, which we probably were. Um, but they were topics that we were passionate about and that we knew. So we knew we could handle taking on nine courses. Plus, we have this epic process for how to do it. Um, and so what happened was it was like a week and a half in. We were already done half of the courses. And a hurricane came into town. And it chased us out of Florida and up into Georgia, and then there weren't any hotels available, so we ended up sleeping at the uh, rest area in our car, and there was like a 100 other cars all doing exactly the same thing. It was pretty surreal uh, just to see all these people. And for us, we couldn't find a hotel anywhere, and then we ended up finding one in Georgia, in Atlanta, the last one left there. Uh, so we drove all the way. It's about eight hours from where we were, but it really took us almost 20 something hours to get there for one night. And then we had to go to South Carolina. We had this company contact us and say, you know, you don't have to finish it by the six weeks. Uh, we can try to extend that for several weeks. You know, we or know you that can take happening. some of the courses off your plate if yeah. it's too many, because we know you guys are being chased by a hurricane, which it literally followed us because while we were up in North <laughs> Carolina, we get hit with a yeah. hit with a tropical storm. So but in the end, 
we did finish all nine courses yeah. in six weeks. And we had two other courses that we were working on our end. So we actually did 11 courses in six <laughs> weeks. And really, we're not unicorns. I mean, if you don't know what that means, is that we're not the special creature that can just create stuff magically mm -hmm. and make it happen. Because I think a lot of times we see other people doing stuff and that we look at them and really we're no different than everyone else. We're not higher skilled or mentally able than anyone else. Actually, I think that sometimes for me, it's a little bit more challenging than other people. But it's really that Carl came down to having a process, to having a blueprint for curriculum development that you could follow step by step, do it quickly, and a recording method that eliminated the need for complex editing. And a lot of people spend so much time editing and things like that. So we simplified everything, even to the fact that, you know, we have a 12 year old and actually when she was 11, she would edit our videos. And that's how simple it is. You know, I think that anyone, anyone could take and edit some of those videos. So yeah, it's all about having a proven process and being efficient. And actually we continued to evolve our process over time. And now we're at the point where all we have to do is put our videos in Dropbox when we're done recording them and we don't have to touch anything. It's done for us. And that process evolved over time. We started, you know, trying to figure out, well, how can we outsource it? Outsourcing sounded like such a scary word at first, but we realized that there's all these resources out there and people who are willing to do work and it's not terribly expensive. And once you have your process down, like we had, we know exactly what to do with every video. It was really easy to give it to somebody else and say, hey, can you do this yeah. for us? And we just developed a system where we would, you know, send files and then That's they it. would take the files, finish editing them, upload them into our course platforms and we were ready to go. And it's not just, again, us, because we've actually taught this to other people, uh, gave them the templates and they were able to just to plug it in there and get it done quickly uh, so it's not a complicated process at all and it can free you off of that if that's something that you don't want to do yeah so. some people love doing the editing and think it's fun and other people you know their eyes roll when we talk about it but it's like hey if you don't want to do that part you absolutely don't nope. have to and so that brings us to our third secret which is the key ingredient to monetizing any course topic and so like we said before we were running five businesses. So the idea of creating a course when we were first presented with it, it felt like another big hairy project to add to the list of all of the things we are already doing. Um, and we just really, we didn't see the potential at first because it felt foreign to us. And we were still stuck feeling like what made us the most money was things we put our time into. And so it was really a shift to start thinking that once we were no longer putting time into something that it would continue to pay us like we got it intellectually but we just couldn't get ourselves to do it again until joel got sick and it pushed us to find a proven process and to apply it so that we could do it in a way that didn't take a lot of work and that we could see from other people that it it was producing for them and it helped shift their mindset and really, again, it comes down to our conditioning, the way that we think about life. We've created this identity of how life has to be. And sometimes, you know, because of being in bed rest, I was able to question that identity that I created into how I had to live. Even though it wasn't what I wanted to live, I was still doing it. So you really ask yourself, what would happen to your business, your life, if you were in bed rest for a year or if you had a family member you had to take care of? or something happened to, to something in, in our society, you know, a friend or something like that, that you needed to help, what would happen to you? You know, what would happen to you? And that's really the scary part that a lot of people don't think about. And they wait till something happens like that and then be like, oh, or when you wanna retire, what's gonna happen? If you're still stuck on trading time for money and if you don't have this big nest egg, then what's gonna happen to you? Yeah, you can turn your expertise into a course. Yeah. Okay, on a side note there. <laughs> so what we realized is that when we finally focused our attention on the courses and we used a proven process that we had learned, it created the passive income that we wanted. But the truth is, is that like making money off of it was really just the beginning. There's so many other benefits to doing the courses. And part of it is that one, you can get paid to market yourself, like literally. You can spend all this Facebook ads and all these different things and trying to, market yourself and spending money, but really of course, you get paid to market yourself. And really one of the other part is, you got too many clients that started getting choosy. You know, for us, it was like, 
because of the courses, we had so many people calling us or, or sending us messages saying, hey, you know, I took one of your courses. I love it. I want to work with you one on one. And it gives us the opportunity to say, no, we, you know, be a little bit more choosy who we work with. And that's well, the beauty of it. And really, it was like the people that we decided we wanted to work with which were the ones that finished a course. Because if they made it to the end of a course, we knew they were our type of client, someone who was committed. And so it's like it was almost like a screening process for <laughs> yeah. our clients. Um, and then those clients that we did take, we took less of them um, and we actually charged more for it because we we valued our time more. Like really the whole lesson helped us recognize that our time is tremendously valuable, especially because if I could spend a couple hours with a client versus spending a couple hours creating a course, that course is gonna pay me forever and yeah. the client's only gonna pay me once. So it just really shifted the way that we thought about our time and making money. Then the other part is that it really increased our credibility. So we were getting contacted by companies like Indeed, LinkedIn, and different organizations, universities and colleges that said, oh, we saw your course, you know, at speaking gigs. And for example, uh, somebody had contacted me because they seen that I had a course and I ended up speaking uh, on the same stage as Magic Johnson. You know, things that I never would have done before because it opened up the opportunity and really just impacting people from around the world and more importantly than anything. You know, like we said, we have students from 190 countries. We have people in Syria that contact say, we took, I'm taking your happiness course because of what's happening in my country. You know, there's a lot of sadness because of the war and stuff like that. And, you know, I want to implement this in my community. We have people in the Philippines, like this village, uh, this ladies all put together uh, money to take our course. And one of the things that ended up happening is that they were telling us how they were implementing it in their community. So really the impact that you leave more than anything is your legacy that you're creating and you're getting paid to really make a difference. And so you might be thinking, I can really see myself creating an online course and I can even see how I could fit it into my business model, but I just can't quite see how the effort is worth it financially. And so we've kind of alluded to this before, but there are multiple ways to make money with courses and we actually, use more than one method in our business. So we have the low cost getting paid to market yourself method, which is something that we do that it brings in money and it's marketing. So that in and of itself is great, but it also helps convert people to our bigger ticket programs and our coaching. And then we also do like a course and group coaching hybrid method which is like doing a group program, except it takes less in-person time. So uh, we do all of our teaching through the automated self-paced course, and then we do things like answer questions and more personalized things in our group aspect of our programs. And so what that does is free our time to spend more time snorkeling at the beach. And what we did, our biggest success is really created multiple courses. And again, you're saying, well, I'm, I'm trying to think of how to create one. I, I can't think of how to create multiple. But really, when you learn how to do it efficiently, for example, we had uh, an idea of one of the courses we wanted to create and we were working on it se several days ago, like a week ago, we started talking about it. And it's uh, about entrepreneurship, try starting a side hustle. And we, from the idea to really diving in and doing it, it's taken us about almost not even three days of producing the content, putting the videos together and then putting them in Dropbox and then it's done. Our so, part's done. <laughs> so, so, and with each of them is really, we saw it as real estate. So every time we have a new course, it's almost like buying a new real estate property, which increases our monthly, we get a monthly raise from it. It solves a new problem. So it's problem, solution, problem, solution. So if somebody has a problem, we created a course, we solved that problem. Then we think of what other problems can they have? Sometimes our students will say, you know, I would really like a course on this. I think it would help me. Um, and we just put it out there and we create it. So again, and each course promotes the other course. So the way that works is if you have more than one course, then different people are going to find it based on the different topics. And then once they find that one course, they go, oh, look, the person has other courses. And yeah. so and actually a lot of our students take multiple, if most of our students take multiple of our courses. And we have, even have a few students that are a little crazy and they've taken like <laughs> literally every course that we've created we have over 60. so it's it's also a great it's a great way to keep clients around it's like it they don't have to go somewhere else for the next step you can create the next step for them and 
really part of it is also pushes us other things like we created t-shirts selling books from it and again it's marketing it's like free market you're getting paid to market uh, but, to a large degree but the good news is that you don't have to do it our way because there's a lot of other ways to monetize courses yeah. so if you were thinking holy crap i don't want to make 60 courses now you know you don't have to no. and really for for example uh michael williams which we talked about uh, one of the things that he's done is that He's created a couple courses specific to stuttering. And, he's, and also public speaking in general. And public speaking. So he doesn't have that many courses. He just only has a, a few courses that he has. Um, but what he's done is really, he promotes it through YouTube. He still does some of his YouTube where he teaches things. Um, and it's been able to replace basically his, his income from other stuff that he does. So he, he makes well over six figures with his courses. And he gets to coach his favorite clients. So yeah, like we do, like we do. So he's very selective on who he really coaches with and he's improved his results because part of what he's done is that people take his courses. They have the foundation. So once they take his courses and they work with him one-on-one, -on -one, he's not starting from scratch. He's really able to then elevate them to a whole new level because they already have the foundation. They did what they needed to do. They're already speaking more fluently and then he can just take them a whole new level. And he's really able to help more people because part of his pain was stuttering. And now he reaches people all over the world and helps them stop studying while making a really good income from it. A lot more than he ever made teaching like from his workshop conferences and all that just through online courses and having passive income. And for example, Phil, he didn't really have a list at all. Like when he started, he just started making online courses. He wasn't doing workshops or seminars or anything like that. He wasn't even coaching people really. Uh, and he was right just now, a man with a skill. Yeah. So <laughs> lots of skills. And he's obviously continued to develop his skills, but he's, he was, he's a leading instructor in a lot of the marketplaces. He does high volume models. So he does low cost and has several, you know, many different courses. Uh, and he also has a high end program that people kind of graduate to if they want to join him. But he makes well over $80,000 a month. And, you know, it's awesome for him because, for example, he's having twins in a couple months and he's going to be able to really just take that time off as much as he wants and continue to have that passive income over $80,000 a month. And ask yourself, who would not want that kind of passive income where you can say, I'm going to take off a year and make over a million dollars? Yeah, that's crazy. It just is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and so, again, each one of these people does it a little bit different. And so the way that Sherry promotes her programs are using Facebook ads and webinars. And she also does a lot of joint ventures, which also push people into her webinars. And she offers her uh, program. She teaches people a little bit. And the ones that are serious, they sign up for her course. And it's um, a group coaching course hybrid. So she's you know having them learn the core content in the course and then they're getting on a live calls she also does um one-on-one -on -one coaching as part of her programs as well to help people plan out their retreat so there's a lot to putting together a retreat so it's a really great way of using the course helps you know split things into modules and break it down and not have to have her be there to walk people through every single step. She just gets to be there for the most important part. And the great thing about, you know, her method of advertising is that once she figured out her numbers, she actually scaled her business really, really fast, fast because she could take what was working and just put more into it. And she had her first million dollar year after I think it was like the second year of offering her program. So she scaled it really fast because she was using um, online ads. And so if you think about it, like Michael was using YouTube as his lead source and the the dog trainers were using their own list and Phil, he was using the course marketplaces and Sherry promotes using Facebook ads. And so we've used kind of a hodgepodge of all of those different tactics. And so there's many different ways to do it, but all of them work. Yep. And that's really the point is that you can customize what you're going to do to fit your own business. And so it really comes down to deciding what your goal is for how you want to fit a course into what you do. So are you just trying to create like an extra stream of income on the side with your course? Or are you looking to fully automate what you're doing now to free your time so you can have like that laptop lifestyle, which ultimately we do hoorah, um, <laughs> <laughs> or somewhere in between? And then also like, are you someone who already has an existing list of clients that you feel like a course would really benefit them? Or are you starting from scratch and you're gonna use some other method like 
YouTube or Facebook or course marketplaces to start, you know, bringing people in or with the course marketplaces, like getting paid to market yourself. So really the opportunities are there. All you have to do is choose what method works best for you. Yep. As you have heard, there are many ways that online courses can enhance, diversify, and transform your business. We hope that after this first episode of Online Course Revolution, you are excited at the possibilities of what online courses can do for you. No matter who you are or what you know and love, there are people out there right now who want to learn what you have to share. We invite you to subscribe and listen as we interview other online course creators so you can learn different strategies and get inspired by their real world success. If you're ready to join the online course revolution, find out how at onlinecoursevolution.com.